Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So I already did put on some like primer and some moisturizer underneath before I sat down to film just to save like a little bit of time. I'm testing out this glow balm thing. Um, I kind of want to see what happens if on top of like the eye cream and everything I put the Rem Beauty this thing on. If I use this on its own, it is too drying I think, but I kind of wonder if I just like use it on top of other things. If I could stop getting cat hair and everything. I need to boot up my air filter and put it back in here and start running it again. One does not just simply tell the cats to not get on like my desk. And I, I try to like make it not super like appealing. Like I try to make it a little bit less accessible, but I mean, there's only so much you can do to stop them. My thumbnails for the past two videos look virtually identical and I just I just was having a little bit too much fun with the Romand Enop Square collection. So no apologies for me, but Things are going to get spiced up today. I want to do a look using this palette from Narimi right here. This is not something I've gotten around to using yet. Shame on me as always. Uh, but as you can see, it has these really dark, intense red and purples. Very excited. I'm pretty sure the color blood here is going to pull very orange, unfortunately. But I think if I use it with which, it should work out. I'm going to go ahead and get started with my foundation. and. I have been way too lazy to wet my sponge lately, like just so lazy, so I've just been using my Clio foundation. For that, I'm going to use my under eye corrector as usual, don't want to forget that, which I've been using for a while. I st the day I'm filming is the day that the Patrick Ta foundation came out for early access, and I ended up forgetting to place my order for the YSL blushes when they dropped, and now the lavender one is sold out, and I was honestly pretty irritated at myself for forgetting something as important as that. Um, so now I just, I like have been sitting on it because I really, really, really wanted that lavender shade. So I'm going to just have to wait for it to come back. So I thought in the meantime, I could get the coral one and something else. And I thought maybe I'd wait for the Patrick Ta foundation to drop and get that. But I honest, I honestly don't know what shade I would be for. Like the arm swatches make it look like one is basically white and four might match me. But then when I saw like the Instagram stories marketing with like the shades, like on like a palette, four looked really dark. So I have no idea. I also, like, I saw that on Ulta, the Chanel Full Coverage Foundation was back in stock. So I added it to my cart because I am I also want to use my $125 in points, probably on the new Natasha Denona palette. I thought I'd throw in that foundation because I've been wanting that foundation for several months, but it's never in stock. And then I, of course, just kind of decided to let it chill because I, you know, had a bunch of stuff to do today. And then when I checked my phone, like, five hours later, it was yoinked out of my cart again. Like... Apparently everybody really wanted it and apparently like everybody bought it today when it came back I guess. I do want like the healthy glow one but I still really wanted the full coverage one. 21 Days of Beauty is coming up. I was gonna make a video on it but I don't know if I will. So you can see I used that little and it blended out pretty quickly like it's not like the most flattering foundation but it is just kind of the most convenient. I'm kind of at a stage in my life where I kind of just want to go back to cushion foundations again because I literally don't even have energy to get up and wet my sponge much less like sit down to film in a timely manner. Like it's, it, I've been so bad about like just existing I kind of just want to go back to using cushion foundations again. <laughs> or maybe I should just get some cushion puffs and start applying my foundation with cushion puffs. I'm using the JX professional triple concealer. I kind of just came to the realization that earlier this morning, I just, I, I feel like I'm just really burned out right now. Cause like, I'm just kind of like in a state where I like, just, I can't seem to make myself feel anything beyond I'm done and I'm tired. Is, is that what burnout is? Maybe I'm just burned out. At the very least, I can look forward to the 5.0 patch. That'll give me a lot more stuff to do so that I can kind of just escape, have a little bit more escapism. I was initially gonna pull for Kazuha cause you know, he's like consistently tiered so high and his buffs are really good. But then I kind of had the last minute realization that it was one of those moments where it was like, if I had a nickel for every DPS that Kazuha was useless on, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice because the two DPS units that I have built the most, like the first one obviously is all Haitham because I started at the tail end of 4.6. So my first ever wish banner that I dumped all of those beginner's wishes on was all Haitham. No regrets as a character and as a unit. He's a lot of fun and he's hot. So, and Dendro does not react to the animo at all. So not really, Kazuha's just like barely 
would contribute anything on a, on a team with all hit them. And then the other DPS I have because I was trying to get Kave is Navia. And Kazuha is literally useless on Navia. So the two DPS I have that I have built the most and used the most often and I'm working on building and investing in the most are the two DPS units that Kazuha just does not have any synergy with. Kazuha is like one of the best units in the game but for my account personally, he is not useful at all, which was just kind of bizarre to think about. So I kind of am going to just like, I'm thinking like, oh, he's, you know, with how strong he is and how popular he is. Apparently he literally just came back in like 4.3 or something. So I'm sure he'll be back eventually again. So I'm just going to pass. I initially was going to pull for him and Raiden, but I'm just going to pass and I'm just going to pull for Raiden. I really don't need any more Dendro on field DPS, but I love Kinich's design and Ajax or Ajaw is hilarious. Like literally the funniest thing ever. I love Ajaw so much. So I may just go for Raiden and Kinich. We'll see if I like, but I think that's what is going to happen because I actually don't really have use for Kazuha right now, but I think maybe like by the time he comes back, maybe I'll have a use for him. But I also really need to keep my wishes banked for like Archon Marathon because like as a new player, like Nahida, Zhongli, Furina, um, you know, I'm going to want those. And if they finally, finally decide to rerun, um, what, Rizli, Rizli, whatever they call, you know, that guy, then I want to make sure I have wishes for him too, right? That's like my plan. I'm gonna powder really quickly. Um, this Cleo foundation, it's nice, but under my eyes it can kind of start to move around a little bit if I don't powder. I'm just gonna really just kind of focus this under my eyes. I may want to use cream products later, and if not, if I use like a powder Korean product, then I don't need to necessarily like set my face. I'm going to use my Olay foundation thing as the eye primer. I got turned on to this as an option by the none other than Tara Babies, which I her channel is definitely a comfort channel of mine. And she has mentioned having dry skin, dry eyelids before. So when she mentioned that and that this foundation as a primer is like her holy grail, um, I was like, okay, I want to try it. But it is kind of expensive for what it is. So I was kind of just waiting for a good opportunity to get it on sale especially since I'm not using it as a foundation, I'm using it as an eye primer. So even if I were to use it on a regular basis, it would probably dry out before I could finish it because I'm not using enough to cover my whole face. Um, okay, next I'm going to do my eyebrows and I'm just going to use my Shiseido eyebrow pencil. I think the brow balance is going to be discontinued soon because Espoir just recently released a new brow pencil. But I do not like that one as much because it has a very thick tip, so I don't think I'm going to get that one. This one is nice because it is so inexpensive, but it can be a little bit like pigmented. So um, I do usually like to go over it with an eyebrow brush later just to kind of blend it out. Like I'll just kind of draw the short choppy strokes and it'll look really bad for like a few seconds. Um, but once you take a brush to it, it blends out nicely. Um, I'm going to try using this color gram eyeliner as my eyebrow pencil. If you guys remember, I tried it in the last video and oh my god, it was like not black at all. So I can't use this for my lower lashes. But I mentioned offhandedly, I think it would be good on my eyebrows. It's good on my front eyebrows. I will say this is like the most subtle front eyebrow pen ever. So if I had a day where I was didn't want to use an eyebrow pencil and I only wanted to use an eyebrow pen, this would be really good because it is making my front eyebrows look really light and fluffy, but it's still not going to be dark enough to be a traditional eyebrow pen. Honestly, this is, product is like high key kind of useless. It's just, so I don't really get it. It's nice for my fronts though. I mean, I, it's, it's, I don't mind it there, but that's just such a niche, niche use. I definitely won't be rebuying it just for that. Thankfully, it didn't cost me very much. I only paid what, like maybe like seven or eight bucks for it. So it's not like I'm really out that much money, but I was kind of shocked at how like literally useless this product is. I like don't actually see a niche for this. Like I can't really think of one. I should never film before I feed the cats because they are being very like, they're like pestering me without actually like acting in a way that I can accuse them of pestering me, if you know what I mean. The name is not on the cover. It's just the, but they are very distinctive. They have beautiful, beautiful artwork. I always wonder which artist she commissions. I'd love to know. Um, and then the shades inside are written in English, but the actual palette name, I, sorry, I couldn't tell you. Part of the appeal of her brand is the packaging. It's also just how compact the color stories are. So if you want, if you're looking for just really unique, compact color selections that really make you think and just make you try things you never would try, then I do quite like her stuff. Okay, so I am going to start off with Blood and Witch. And then I will go into Snake and Incubus. So red on the inner corner, 
purple on the outer corner. If I need the black to deepen things up, I can use that. And if I need to blend it out with lighter mattes, I've got plenty of options in my hoard. <laughs> so I'm going to start, I'm going to start off with this flat brush. You know what? I stand corrected. This is very red. It actually pulls so ever slightly pink, but this is a, it's pretty red. I stand corrected, this is actually quite red, and it doesn't pull as pink as some other reds I've tried. There is a red shadow I tried from Flower Nose once, but it kind of creased and faded pretty quickly, so hopefully this doesn't do that. But you can see if I apply a lighter layer, you see how it has a more pink kind of lean to it, but it's not as pink pulling as some other reds I've tried. It's hard to find a red red eyeshadow, like it's not easy, so I'm always looking or a good red. Now Nareemi's shadows can be quite powdery so I am really lightly dipping my brush into the pan so that I don't get too much fallout and I am just packing it on right now so it looks super sus but it's fine it'll get better. All right I'm gonna use Incubus now so I'm gonna use a, a different paddle brush. Okay this does look darker than I thought it would. That's good. I was afraid it might be too light. You can see <laughs> this purple shade, this blended out in like a heartbeat, that's cool. Again, I'm really trying to make sure I stamp down the majority of the pigment first before I start blending because I do not want purple powder all over my face. Now, as Robert Welsh would say, you know this could be solved by just doing your face, your eyes first, right? But I, old habits die hard, I'm a face first person, oh well. They also, you know, as you can see, they blend easily into each other without looking muddy. Yeah, this, um, the red kind of stuck down and that'll probably take more elbow grease to blend, but this purple is almost blending itself. It's almost going out, like I'm almost losing control over it. I don't know if you could tell. Mochi just came running and yelling at me like, I guess, I don't know, is, is there something urgent? Did something... Okay, I'm gonna go into Witch now, which is that darker red. I want to see how much I can darken up everything with Witch. Ooh, yeah, this is like the dried blood red. It even kind of darkened up the purple too. That is an intense shade. I'm always down for like the dried blood red shades. I'm gonna really try and like hug it to my lash line and then blend it upwards. This shade does blend out very quickly and easily as well. It really only is blood that kind of wanted to stick down a little more, which doesn't surprise me. Nice. Okay, I'm going to now switch to a clean brush that is a little bit fluffier and I'm going to go into blood, but I'm going to try and like blend it out a little bit. I mean, we'll see. It could go horribly wrong or pretty good. So this shade is not the easiest to blend. I'll just kind of say that. It is blending, but it is not necessarily the easiest to blend, especially because the thing is I'm trying to blend it without it necessarily turning pink. I want it to still read as being red. I don't want to blend it out to the degree that somebody would look at it and be like, oh, that's such a pretty pink and purple look. And it's like, no, this is not pink and purple. This is red and purple. So I'm trying to blend, but I'm also trying to not lose the redness as I blend. That's the hard, that's, that's the other hard part about red shadows is like they can look red, but then as you blend it out, suddenly it's like, oh, where'd the red go? I have to be careful when I layer mattes on though, because past a certain point if my eyelids are too dry, then I'm just gonna get fallout. Nareemi's mattes, in my experience, are not that dry. So they're not gonna be as mattifying, they're not gonna be as blurring, but it does make them, I think, easier to work with and layer. And if you, ever look at her Xiao Hongshu account or any of her other socials where she's active, she has some pretty insane looks. So if she were to make her matte formula more dry, it, a lot of her looks would become like really difficult to pull off, I think. Okay, I'm going to switch to a different brush because like, <laughs> that's gonna stain. I'm gonna take another fluffy brush and I'm gonna go into Snake, which is that lighter purple. And I'm going to see if I can use this to blend out the purple at the edge of my eye look. Although this is not, the, the snake is not pastel by any means. It's still, it's still fairly intense. So I'll have to be kind of careful. I 
and Mr. Bean is <laughs> crawling onto my desk. Okay, I'm gonna go back into Incubus. Don't really like the angle that it ended up being blown out in, but I kind of lost control of the eyeshadow for a second there, so that's that's my bad. I am going to go into like a really small brush, and I'm going to go ahead and start using these um, the shades on my lower lash line. I'm not gonna put the red on my lower lash line though, because I sometimes it can make my eyes look a little bit swollen. <laughs> I don't always care, but sometimes I care. It's a little bit messy, so um, what I am going to do for the lower lash line is I am going to pull in a separate shade. So I'm going to use I'm going to use this shade here from this Roman quad. It's just a very like typical. It, it's like a painfully typical shade, but um, this shade will kind of blend out the purple and still add a little bit of some nice depth to my lower lash line at the same time. Yeah, do you see how like just a little bit of brown kind of tones it down, blends it out, and makes it look not quite as like unnatural that like the purple kind of is like blended out into something as opposed to the purple just like being like stapled onto the lower lash line, which that is that is a very painful mental image. Dude, off my desk. Please. Okay, so this is what my makeup looks like right now. Honestly, I like don't even want to put shimmers on. I'm not gonna go for the red today. Like, I'm honestly scared. I don't want to ruin my look with it. But I do think that Star is gonna be really fun to play with. I feel like I could see myself doing something with silver. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finalize the shimmer placement. So I'm gonna go into Star right here, which looks like it's gonna have some purple shift to it. Generally, ver they vary. Some of them are creamy and almost a little bit squishy and others are more powdery and glittery. But I do generally find that they all kind of work fine with a brush or a finger. Um, and if it's lighter, I haven't really had issues with the wear time with the lighter ones. But the darker ones, sometimes I, you know, feel like Asian shadows in general they haven't quite mastered the darker shimmer formulas yet. And even like a lot of Western indie brands don't do dark shimmers very well without them fading and creasing in like record time. Like, like I remember the OG Fall Magic palette from Unearthly was particularly guilty of that, so. I kind of want to try Firefly on my lower lash line actually. That would be a good place to stick it. And it does have a base, so I'm not gonna use it on like the inner corner. I'm just gonna put it on top of the purple because like I, I don't want to like not try Firefly because as you probably saw in like the me holding up the pan to the camera, it has quite a lot of reflective colors in it. So I like, I didn't want to like ignore it entirely, but my upper eyelid was just kind of like a little too nice for me to want to mess with. Okay, and then um, I wa really want to take that star shade. I'm going to take it on a fluffier brush now because I'm going to apply it more like you can see, I'm going to apply it more diffuse, dust it across the top of my eyelid. Also, like, I'll make it more dense at the top. This is such a pretty shade. Definitely not like a super unique shade in the grand scheme of things, but it is very pretty. Narimi is an influencer, so this is an influencer brand technically, but it's just, it's so unique. You can definitely tell that she like just wants to do her own thing, her own color selections. You know, very intense, very colorful, lots and lots of fun. I really do want to try Sugarok sometime, but they are very, very expensive. So I haven't really, and I haven't, I, if, and because of how expensive they are, it's going to have to like be something that I absolutely love to convince me to spend on it. So I haven't tried them yet just because I haven't seen anything from them yet that's really truly like caught my attention. I really need to wash my brushes too. I have a lot of my favorite brushes have been MIA because they're in the wash pile and they've been there for like three months. It's like, why wash my brushes? I can just buy more. Okay, so that's the eye look so far. I honestly love how this looks. It looks just so cool. Sign me up for like a dark blood red look anytime. I'm always down for it, so I'm excited. It would definitely look better if I put something in the waterline, so I'll see what I have. No promises though. There should be a silver somewhere. So this is a KVD Dazzle Stick and Thundercloud. There just, there should be a silver. I don't know where, but there should be. So I think if I just, um, I may just kind of do like your traditional line across the upper eyelid. Oh yeah, and then like it's, it, it drew on nice and thick too. I actually quite like that. If you want more precision, definitely just like rub it onto a brush, but I wanted to just like kind of really like how thick it looks. 
I actually kind of like that. And I don't know if you noticed, but Thundercloud does have other color reflex in it as well. So it's not like just pure white silver. There are other shades in it. So I feel like that kind of really helps add to the intrigue. This is not technically, this is technically a, um, a shadow. So it's not really going to last super well in the waterline because you're, you're supposed to use this on your eyelids and it's meant to be blendable. But the Nabla Cupid's Arrow in three, I have used these as a last resort in my eyeliner before. Honestly, the wear time is not awful. I try to keep it really just focused on the outer half so that as little of it comes in contact with my actual cornea as possible. And then I'm going to take a liquid eyeliner on my inner corner. Do you see like the difference having that inner corner defined? It just adds so much more definition. I'm going to do my eyelashes and my mascara, but I'm just going to do that off camera. I'll be back and you'll see me in a couple seconds. Okay, so I have on a pair of doe lashes and you can see when the eye look is this intense, lashes definitely really, really help. I also did go ahead and take the eyeliner up my epicanthic fold, kind of do more of like an intense, actual sharp eyeliner. It's not easy to pull off because I'm really fighting against the contours of my epicanthic folds. So, but like, and it, the problem, the eyeliner I used from Heroin Make, it's really not pitch black enough to really actually fight against this successfully, but I'm like, I feel like I'm slowly starting to get the angle that I like and I would, I'm hoping that I can make a video tutorial on how to do inner corner liner if you have epicanthic folds and or monolids in the future, just be from practicing. So I think this is a pretty good practice session. They're looking pretty even. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to do wing liner because as you can tell, I've got a lot of eyeshadow on. I don't need eyeliner with this. I don't know if this is going to work, but I had a thought of doing gradient blush. I'll try it. If it doesn't work. I will, I will find a way to improvise around it. But so I'm gonna use this Dior blush in rosewood. I actually don't think I've used this shade yet. What's wrong with me? I don't know. But I really, really liked the look of this shade. It's a, it's, it's just a like this is like for me. This is like a really pretty color on me. And I think I'm gonna keep this one pretty light. Um, so this is the Tony Moly. Um, blush in the shade 07. I initially got like two like nudie-ish shades and then they did a shade expansion of like this kind of lavender-ish shade plus two pinker shades and I love the formula so much and they're really not expensive at all. Uh, I'm gonna try this. I don't know, it doesn't, is it lavender? I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to get nervous now. And I'm gonna focus this on the center of my face. So this, I, I like, I wanted to grade, to do a gradation. It's like a softer version of what's on my eyes, which is what I was trying to go for. Um, this blush from Tony Moly, it's not quite lavender either. I would say it's more like a, just a very purple toned. It's like a, it's like a pastel pink with a pastel purple lean. I don't necessarily call this one a true lavender. So as usual, my hunt for a lavender toned blush continues. I really was hoping that the YSL one could do that for me, but it is sold out. It's nice. I, I don't mind it. Um, I think I need like a darker toned. I do kind of want to do like a darker toned blush, like right up against my eyeshadow. I'm going to use this blush from Clinique right here. This is a this is a trio that is no longer available. I'm pretty sure the shade in the middle is permanent, but I couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> I had some other options like from Suku and stuff that I was considering that probably would be wiser to use because I haven't used those in a while. But I this one was just closest, and I'm. My spoons are running out. Yes, I am one of the two dozen people on the internet who still loves and uses the Clinique Cheek Pops. No, you're not getting on here. No, you're not. No, no on desk. No, be naughty. No naughties. He's cute, but he also like misbehaves all the time, which I mean, not surprised because like kitten, but uh... I'm going to use how many carrots from Fenty. Yeah, this is a pretty shade. I could have used this on my eyelid too. Um, it's white, but at the same time, it also has like no base whatsoever. So it kind of, it's, it's like a perfect white toned highlighter for if you don't want it to look ashy. Like I have, I have Becca Pearl, but that one, it can get intense. That one can get pretty intensely white sometimes. So I'm not always down for it. Okay, um, I do want to put on some like bronzer slash contour and the 21 days of beauty they're, they're they're doing this thing where if you're diamond or platinum you can like preview and buy the deals early so i was going to get the bobby brown bronzer for half off a lot just so that it could be used by my 125 dollars in points i forgot 
You know, it would be nice if like my brain worked, like if I wasn't stupid, like that would be nice. I'm just gonna go with a very light layer of this from Roman. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna mix the middle. And I'm like barely, I'm, I'm just using enough to kind of just shade my face a little bit because I don't want the blush to turn super muddy. Just use like, so I'm gonna barely use it on the upper perimeter of my face by my cheekbones, but I am gonna just make sure I put it as usual on my jawline. It also kind of helps to blend my makeup into my neck. Now for the fun part is picking out my lip shade. I definitely want to do something that's like really, really cool. Like almost like, like these, you know? Um, I kind of want to use this today. This is Romand um, 40 Black Sapphire. It was a very, very, very limited um, collab. Um, two minis were all that was really released out of it. So I think I'm going to use this today. Okay, so I'm going to contour my lips a little bit first. one okay yeah that works because this is actually i thought this would be more of like a a berry with a lot of red but it is actually pretty purple Um, I am gonna go ahead, I wiped off a little bit onto the neck of the bottle because it had rolled around so much the applicator had like way too much product but I am gonna go ahead and do second layer. I'm not gonna rub my lips together, I'm not gonna smack them too much or anything, like I'm just gonna apply the second layer and be done. And this is how it looks, I, oh my god I love this color, what the heck. I thought based on the tube that it was gonna be a lot more red but it's actually, it's actually like perfect, oh my gosh. Let me see what happens if I put a little bit of red around the outer parts. I'm curious now. I actually really like that. Okay. Um, I used, it's now discontinued, but it's the shade 127 from the YSL Balm. It's actually a little bit more of like a tomato red, like it's a little bit more of a warm red, but um, I don't actually have like the red red in YSL because like, I mean, who needs that many red lips? Oh my god, I wish Romand had made a full size of this because people missed out. But I, I really want to match with the with the eyeshadow, so I'm going to take Black Pulse just for a little bit of added glitter. I know, we're like layering it on today. For once, I had like a plan. And I'm just going to focus it on the center. And I'm also going to like not put it on like the inner part of my mouth so that it doesn't like get sticky or anything. Here is how everything turned out. I like it. I like the eye look. I I haven't done something colorful in a really long time and my thumbnails have all been looking a little bit same same so I thought to myself, you know, I really should try something new and colorful. And I was a little intimidated at first going in because like whenever I try to think about putting colors together, if I just don't have the mental energy, then I just don't have the mental energy. But I know once I get started, things can go from there. So I am I'm very happy with how this turned out. I really do quite like this look. I really, really love this lip shade. I cannot believe that this was so limited and it never got released as like a full size. That's kind of nuts. If you have any questions or if you have any whatevers, um, always feel free to leave comments. I love seeing your guys' comments. You all are so sweet. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna sign off now and hopefully there'll be more colorful looks coming. <laughs> maybe more vaguely Genshin coded looks coming. This one, not really, but like maybe there'll be more in the future, especially if I'm like, not if especially if i'm like really really like hurting for inspiration i may just pull up a random character i like and use the color palette as an inspiration so you know um, but yeah thank you for those of you who do play genshin and are going to be pulling on the upcoming banners may your may you win your 50 50s and may everything go well thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye